guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Olive Nkirote and this is Olive Nkirote rebranded so ONI is a business and finance platform I have come to terms guys that topics to do with business and money make me happy so there's something that has been popping on the internet I'm wondering my Kenyan audience my African audience are you guys seeing what is in the internet these things called nfts and what they're doing to the crypto world or to the art world i don't know what nfts are why are they useful why are people buying them for that much money how do you access them how do you buy them which ones should you buy so, nfts are essentially known as non-fungible tokens non-fungible comes from fungible fungible means exchange of two items that are similar if i have two five kenya shillings like two five bobs and then i give you and then you give me a 10 bob we've essentially just exchanged the same thing like the value is the same like there's nothing that has changed you can't be like olive women cooler i'm a i can't be like whoever women cooler it's essentially an equal transaction like we've just described what fungible is and if you look at the top far right you see that fungible which is the first row i.e there's tangible asset which is money or gold because i can give you money and you give me money and it's tangible and it's fungible because it's mutually interchangeable another asset that's fungible but now the one that is intangible is cryptocurrency so cryptocurrency is ideally fungible because you can exchange 10 bitcoins for 10 bitcoins and you'll be happy about it however when you go down on the last row you'll see that there are two types of non-fungible assets so an example of a non-fungible asset but one that is tangible is a car so i can't essentially exchange a car for another car just like that i can't be like give me your mansion and i'll give you my bungalow it doesn't work like that so it's essentially non-fungible you can't exchange one for the other however this is tangible and then when the other side now where we are currently is now what is known as a non-fungible token and essentially a non-fungible asset so this is what we are about to talk about in this video and if you can see this is a crypto kitty that was sold for a good amount of money it's essentially intangible because it exists on the internet but however it's also not fungible because you can't really change this crypto kitty with any other thing on the internet that is what essentially non-fungibility means it's not mutually interchangeable and you can't exchange an nft with another nft it's just not possible that's what non-fungibility means nfts are essentially sold from a blockchain technology these nfts are not sold just anywhere if you watched my crypto series you'll understand that the blockchain technology is decentralized in the sense that it is in my computer it could be in your computer it could be in anyone's computer in this world it is not centralized like a bank it is transparent because it records all the transactions that happen on it and if you've watched my series guys and i will go back to it please watch this video all the things you need to know about crypto and i explain everything to do with the blockchain technology and you will understand what i'm saying if you've never heard about it sour so as much as it is decentralized it is also transparent you can see all the transactions and immutability basically means any transactions on the blockchain technology cannot be copied cannot be changed cannot be altered cannot be affected in any way so now nfts are on the ethereum blockchain technology ethereum is essentially the blockchain technology itself i have explained that bitcoin despite it being a currency it's a blockchain of its own the currency itself is a blockchain technology hence why in the blockchain technology for bitcoin all the transactions for bitcoin are recorded there so ethereum is a technology of its own as well however ethereum is not a currency ethereum is the technology itself and if you look at this picture on the screen is explaining that ethereum makes building decentralized applications easier than ever instead of needing to launch a new blockchain for every dap you can build thousands of applications on top of ethereum's platform so essentially ethereum was created to be a place that hosts software from different 
people, different walks of life, different companies, and all that. With that, essentially, then you learn that Ethereum is like the hub of different applications or different dApps. And I wanted to explain to you guys what dApps are and maybe have an idea of what we are talking about. So right now I'm going to take a screenshot from um, the website liquid.com and they feel like they explain what dApps are very, very well. So essentially dApp is short for decentralized application and I want to give an example of a centralized application. One of them is like Facebook, right? So you and I can upload our content on there. We can access um, conversations with people everywhere in the world. However, the data we have provided to Facebook, essentially Facebook owns this data. And what Facebook does is essentially sell this data to people or companies that are willing to advertise and they get money in exchange for that which is ads however a decentralized application does not have a centralized unit or person or authority or owner that essentially owns this data so the data is yours okay whatever you decided maybe to upload on this dap it is yours to stay it is not the application that takes the mandate over your data that is the only difference between a normal app here on the internet and a decentralized app that exists on the blockchain network. So now, since you've understood what a DAP is, you're probably wondering, okay, Oli, give me an example of a DAP. Let me understand what you're saying. Okay, I'm going to take you to our website right now. And one of these websites that I'm showing you guys right now is called Raribo. So Raribo is essentially a DAP. So currently we are using a website to access it but rarible itself has been built on a blockchain network which is a site that is used to sell nfts so as you guys can see these are nfts being sold you can come place your bid and you can sell and make money from it so essentially Rarible is the decentralized application which exists on the Ethereum blockchain network and giving you characteristics of the blockchain network beforehand, which I explained that it's transparent, you can see every transaction, it's immutable, none of these transactions can be altered and it's decentralized, meaning it's hosted in all if not most computers in the world. The same goes back now to what exactly ADAP does. It hosts your application but it does not own the data you host on its application so essentially rarible cannot claim that these nfts are theirs they are not theirs me as a creator can come and open an account and create my own nft upload it on the rarible website but i own all the rights to my nft i own all the rights to my asset We have explained non-fungibility, but we've not explained a token. Why? Because an NFT is essentially a non-fungible token, NFT. And I want to explain to you guys what token means in the crypto world, in the blockchain world, okay? A token is a representation of a particular asset. Essentially, it is something that is either physical or something that is digital, okay? that represents something of value or represents something that is an asset. So that thing is a token, okay? And it has to reside on top of another blockchain. So in this case, NFTs are tokens because they reside on the Ethereum blockchain. So a token can represent any asset and that asset could be fungible or non-fungible. Fungible in the sense that it's representing a currency, for example. And if you can search on coinmarketcap.com, you will see that there are Ethereum-based tokens. And I'm going to show you guys on my screen right now. These are tokens that represent currency. These tokens you're looking at right now on your screen are tokens that reside on the Ethereum blockchain and they represent a currency. They represent money. So now NFTs 
are tokens as well because they represent some form of value and this value is art so if you look at the nft space like for example the nba topshot.com which hosts nfts from the nba history this video this picture this gif is essentially a token because it is representing something of value hence why it's called a non-fungible token so it's a token because one it resides on the ethereum blockchain and two it is representing something of value something that is an asset so it's been tokenized you know the picture has been tokenized the video has been tokenized and i'll give you an example with something in the physical realm if you're going to play poker you see those two chips they give you in the poker table those chips really don't have any significant value but when you enter the poker place and you trade your money and they give you these chips these chips have been tokenized these chips now have value these chips represent money you get so when you're playing poker you've lost all your chips essentially you've lost all your money so the chips have been tokenized okay so they really didn't have value until value was put on them so it's the same thing with nfts these are videos that exist anywhere on the internet guys these are pictures that are existing on the internet gifs that have been created on the internet but they've been tokenized and like I said, they've been, one, hosted on the blockchain technology, two, a specific blockchain technology, which is Ethereum, and three, they've been given a form of value, right? And hence why they're now known as tokens. How do NFTs come to life? Everything we've talked about in this video, in case you have questions, please leave them on the comment section. I'm going to help you answer. And most of the episodes that are going to be coming after this one are going to be more about NFTs. So it's really important that you guys actually understand the basics of what NFTs are. So we started with blockchain. I believe right now, you are aware of what blockchain is and blockchain is honestly a network or a technology that exists to create a transparent decentralized platform that gives power to the people and not governments or organizations second we went to ethereum so basically here we're just doing a recap of how nfts come to life and we explained that ethereum is not a currency ethereum is a software platform based on the blockchain network and ethereum is essentially a platform that allows you to build software or apps for different products and services on its blockchain network so olive can go and create her own app there you can create your own app there and we all create you know minor minor blockchains on the main blockchains fun fact to pay for the space and power to build your app on ethereum you use ether so guys when you say you're buying ethereum you're not really buying ethereum you're buying ether and ether is the digital oil that fuels the ethereum network so the next line is dApp. so dApps, like i told you guys are decentralized applications these are software or apps that essentially are built on ethereum and i give you guys an example example of a dab rarible.com is essentially a marketplace an open marketplace where you can go and buy and sell your nfts so i gave you guys um the characteristics of a dab that it does not store your data it just gives you a platform for you to host your data or your information or your art or whatever it is that is what dabs are so that is essentially how nfts come to life it's because of blockchain which gave birth to ethereum and ethereum which gave birth to dabs then we finalize the second part with what exactly is a non-fungible token when you add the non-fungibility and the token you come up with an nft so what is an nft it is a digital representation of a unique asset that cannot be traded for another nft residing on the blockchain network and it acts as a digital certificate of authenticity as it cannot be replaced or replicated it acts as a digital certificate yes because it's recorded on the blockchain technology and we said anything recorded on the blockchain technology cannot be altered replicated replaced or you know those are the characteristics of essentially the blockchain network and i gave you guys an example and that is the kipchoge nfts guys did you know that our own kipchoge sold his nfts for i think 
I think $40,000. I don't know. I'm going to show you guys in a bit. So, I hope these two slides really summarize everything that we've talked about in this video. If you have any questions, guys, don't be shy. Leave a comment down below. If you're confused, I'm ready to unconfuse you. And I'm excited for you guys to see other episodes that are coming about NFTs because it's about to get fun now. Subscribe if you haven't. Like this video. And yes, I'm here at runningmagazine.ca. Lead Kipchoge career highlights sold as NFTs for $50,000. Dollars. So I wanted to go to an NFT guys that is closer to home and when you scroll down you'll see they said that he auctioned off a couple of his career highlights. The Berlin one in 2018 and his historic sub two hour marathon in Vienna. I tweeted a tweet. <laughs> um, I can say that I'm really grateful to have the highlights of my career now as available as an NFT. I hope it will give someone around the world the same positive memories. Ever since Kipchoge's NFT auction closed on April 8th, the value of the Ether has continued to rise. Guys, I Saying they're saying the value of the ether we are here saying ethereum it's called ether has continued to rise and while he sells and him this the same sale would be this so when we go to mementibo.io guys this was the nft that was sold so this particular one i think was sold for 3.1 ether uh no actually no this one was sold for more the one for him running the marathon in less than two hours was sold for 17 ether Guys, so 17 ether times two thousand dollars do the math for yourself guys so this particular video with his signature it has sound but i'm not playing for you guys the sound <laughs> just go to this um website and check the nft out guys and imagine with the auction the person who won received the artwork in high quality and a personal video message from Eliud to congratulate the new owner wow that's so kind uh, the nft represents the career milestone of Eliud. it is digitally signed the auction of this nft will take place on open sea so it is actually a adapt or rather a marketplace for nfts and then authenticity together with the performer we created the artwork and made it available as an nft so i think momentable is the one that worked with kipchoge um to create the nft and then as you guys can see they said that the animation is an artistic expression it is made completely royalty free and will remain so during its existence meaning me and you can download it by the way guys we can download that nft but the only real owner is the one who get signed on the blockchain technology we're gonna go about this in the next video now I'll tell you guys the the science behind nfts that i can actually download this nft from this website like right now but i'm not going to be the owner of this nft it has been you know it has been whatever by someone else like someone has the actual nft on the blockchain technology and that's why it matters so yeah anyway i wanted to just show you guys that i can link this down below for you to go read or check it out i hope you guys have learned what nfts are what they're all about and most of all are excited to see how you can create your own nft how you can sell your nft or even buy one like guys if you're excited um subscribe and let's 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 join me on this fun ride okay Hi guys, bye. Don't forget to start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. This is O N R, and yeah, guys, bye. Mwah.